Yes, hi, 911. I would like to file a missing persons report. Name, Milwaukee Bucks. Last seen, Milwaukee. Missing since when? The NBA restart. Look, first and foremost, I need to apologize to the Orlando Magic fan base, franchise, and the city of Orlando. When news broke that Aaron Gordon was going to miss game one of the NBA playoffs, I said the game was going to be a massacre. That's a direct quote, a massacre. I mean, who wouldn't take that bet? The number one seeded Bucks against the eighth seed Orlando Magic without one of their star players, the star player? But if anything, the NBA bubble has shown us that basketball is very unpredictable and the absence of fans, the absence of home court advantage completely changes the game. But I think this speaks more to who the Bucks are now currently than who they were in the past. Breaking down Tuesday afternoon's game against the Magic, they were defeated 122 to 110. No big deal. Teams have off days, right? Again, this speaks more to who the Bucks are currently than who they were at the start of the NBA season. Now let's just look at the facts, the facts of the playoffs and the facts of a one seed versus an eighth seed. One seeds rarely lose to eighth seeds. In fact, it's happened only five times out of a possible 72 since the NBA's current format constructed in 84. No big deal, I guess. Things happen, right? But now the Bucks face the task of winning four out of six, which is something they haven't been able to do since March. On March 1st, the Bucks were 52-8, and eight, halfway through a set of back-to-back -back games that wrapped in Miami. Since then, starting with a 16-point loss to the Heat, they have gone 4-10. and 10. That includes a 3-5 and five record in the bubble seeding games, plus Tuesday's incredible loss to the Magic. And speaking of that Orlando Magic game, let's break that down because Milwaukee fell behind 10 points in the first quarter, 18 in the second. Their biggest lead was just 8-2, to two, and not to mention that they trailed for nearly the last 40 minutes of the game. In short, the Magic did to the Bucks what the Bucks were supposed to do to the Magic, and they did so without Aaron Gordon. Would I be worried if I was a Bucks fan? Absolutely. Now, did the Bucks underestimate Orlando? They say they didn't. I think they did. But you know what? That's what happens when you're a number one seed. It's a lot different than what's going on in the West, where you can say the Portland Trailblazers truly should not be a number eight seed, and that upset wouldn't be so much of an upset. But the Orlando Magic against the Bucks? On paper, it's no competition. In reality, it seems to be a lot harder for the Bucks than it should be. Now, game two between these two teams is expected to kick off at 6 p.m. on ESPN, and the news is out Aaron Gordon will miss this game as well. So it's going to be interesting to see if the Magic stick to the game plan that worked so well for them on Tuesday and if the Bucks are still negatively affected by it. What was the game plan? Well, the Magic held the Bucks in transition limiting them to just 10 fast break points. They capitalized on turnovers, knocked down open threes, and moved the ball with purpose. They dished out around 29 assists. So if the Bucks just had a bad game, they should be able to just no problem. But if the Bucks are who they are in the bubble, the bubble Bucks, if you will, do not be surprised if the Orlando Magic take a 2-0 lead in this series. My guess, the Bucks will win, but are they the same team that I picked to go to the Eastern Conference Finals? No. Are they going to win this series? I don't know. Probably? Most likely. Definitely? Not sure. We're going to have to wait and see.